Well, hello there, YouTube. <laughs> Don't be shocked. It's 39 degrees and sunshine. Mostly blue skies. I think it's supposed to be this way most of the day. See all the little budding everywhere? Spring is coming rapidly. Hump day. Let's get her started here. And it's nice out. Danny Boyd, did you finish your treat? <laughs> Goofy mutt. Man, it's so nice out here. It's just distracting. I know, it's beautiful. Man, I'm telling you, working on those RC cars last night, ate dinner, and I was done. That <laughs> relaxes me like no other. Man, something about them things. I love something that just is that relaxing. What do you think, Danny? Danny says, yeah, I know them things. Crazy old mutt. Man, oh man. I was just telling the peeps all the little budding that we see everywhere. Won't be long, we'll be saying spring is sprung. And I mean, it won't be long at all either. Mm. This does your soul good. That was a very sunny, Beautiful drive to work. It was. It was gorgeous. Yep. God almighty. I'll take that sunshine. Yeah, it's 48 degrees here in Van Chulo. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good one. It is. All right, Mama. All right. I'm going to bust it out and get in there. We're a little... <laughs> We're <laughs> run, a little yeah, run a little late. Yeah. All Five right. minutes late. That's it. Have yourself a wonderful hump day there, Mama. You too, sweetheart. All right. right. Love you. See you. Bye. I love you. Bye-bye now. Bye. This thing's about 60 miles from turning 60,000. It's a 2015 GS. I love it. It's got regular key, you no know, keyless ride. It's old school, but it's in for uh, the drive shaft replacement. After 37,000 miles, I just automatically get a drive shaft. So the drive shaft got a, a badly leaking fork seal. See all the scum on it. She's yeah, she's she's a leaker. Anyway, that's why I'm that's what I'm doing now. Um, oil change, um, the fork seals, and the drive shaft. I don't have the RO with me. Kelly's pulling some stuff for it, so I'll see more details. I think that's it, though. Well, I gotta say, that was a pleasure to do the drive shaft on. So I, th I thought he had a locking fill cap. So the guy calls back and says, oh, it's just a, like a four millimeter Allen. It, <laughs> it looked like it was overcomplicated. I wasn't gonna mess with it. I figured it was some kind of a key type thing or something that, that unlocks it. But yeah, the drive shaft was absolutely, oh, look at that, it's right there. There's the date. It's like a tire, 38 week of 2014. That is the original drive shaft in that thing. Absolutely perfect. Still had all the Kluber grease on it from the factory. I may have got a lot of that on when I was taking it off. Getting around the boot because they coat all the inside. Oh, there's some over there. Coat all the inside of that boot with the Kluber grease. But not all was pristine. It was my a dexterity problem of myself i could not get the front of this thing you know well here's the here's the front so when you get this thing up you know you got this um universal joint that moves all around and at the very tip of the shaft and it's back here a ways into the shaft is probably about right in there well there's you guys ever done drive axles and side by sides and four by fours and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if cars that way, but I know all the ATVs and side by sides and stuff we have. There's a snap ring that's on those. And um, man, well, get them off's no big deal. I, I've got a super easy way to get everything ready. I got this little skinny brass punch and you just get it back to where it stops on that on that little snap ring and just, just a light little love tap and they pop right off, you know. 
And um, I could not get that thing started back on that shaft. And you can't mangle, you can't force anything. You gotta be, gotta be careful. But you know, you're shoving a drive shaft going up a hill. It's like trying to, it's trying to hammer a, a wet noodle is what it feels like. And I finally got it on there. And I get it in a certain spot and you mask everything off with a, with a towel and take a soft rubber mallet. Don't use anything metal on these things. And um, just give the back of the, just hold this thing so that when you hit the end of it, you want to have as straight of a blow as possible. You don't have to hit them hard, but you get everything lined up and just a couple little love taps and boom, it collapses that little clip and on the shaft it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm down here by myself. I should have stopped and got somebody to help me, but I'd have it's been 15, 20 minutes explaining how everything's got to go here, and I'll end up pinching somebody's fingers. It's kind of one of those things that it's almost easier to just do it by yourself, but yeah, it all worked out. It's just me whining because I just I just wasn't holding my mouth right or something. But yeah, just everything was perfect. No water in there. And then, of course, you know, when I flopped this thing back, um, you can see inside there. I don't know how. I didn't get a single little chip of anything in there. So it's nice when you're inside there because you have a couple pieces that make it in there. And then uh, I like when when I have them off, I put the little drain plug in on the from the top side. If you don't, it comes with a, you guys that bore cylinders and probably do other things, it comes with this deburr, deburrer. You have to reach in the hole. That thing spins on a swivel. And you walk that thing around the hole and that thing deburrs it. If you don't get them burrs off of there, We've had a couple people from other places that did the drain on it, and there are little things inside there where you look up there with a little camera scope, they didn't deburr it. Well, if you don't deburr it, you got little things poking up, and the, the little uh, drain does not go in there all the way. Or worse yet, you get some yahoo that reaches up there and goes, oh, look, gong, gong, gong. Yeah, you yank on it hard enough, it'll pop inside there. You can, I don't know how long it'll last, but you can use, I use some of this anaerobic gasket sealer on there and I can kind of wet them a little bit. I think it's actually got a BMW part number on it. Yeah, it's Loctite 518. It smells like grapes. But it's uh, it never completely hardens or anything. It's good waterproofing, it's great. Use it for, you know, liquid gasket type stuff for different things. But I, I put a little, especially when I have the rear off, because it's very easy to put a nice clean coat on it. And then I load the drain from the inside down. There's a big hole there when there's no drive shaft in it. But, um, yeah. All new bolts everywhere. They, they're not replacing this one. You just have to wire brush it off and you use um, Loctite 2701 on it and torque it. They've changed the torque specs on it. I don't know what it was before, but uh, I, you can edit a PDF and I just write it. For whatever reason, the bulletin doesn't say it. It says, go to air to see the new specs. So, <laughs> and torque everything down. Thing about BMWs, everything's torqued. But cool. So now I need to warm the thing back up again to uh, change the oil. Now that I realize just uh, an Allen screw holds that thing on. And we're doing the fork seals. That was another thing we're waiting on to get a okay for the fork seals. We're going to do both. It, don't ever do one fork seal at a time. That one, the left side's definitely leaking. But you fix that, he'll drive down the road and you know, 100 miles later, now the right side's leaking. You know, unless something physically has damaged the fork tube, which there's no damage on it, um, if one's gone, the other one's going to be right behind it. So get that done. I need to talk to him about brake pads, too, because he's, he's about 40% on the rear. It's here. 
be a good time to put some on it anyway i just thought i'd give you guys a quick update and show you that drive shaft man that's the good the cleanest one i've ever taken out or i've seen taken out once you get 37,000, this one, he's like 60 miles from being 60,000. I think I said that earlier, but uh, yeah, he's over the 37,000 mile mark, so he automatically gets a drive shaft. Oh, what a pleasure this thing was. I had a personal problem getting it back on, but yeah, it was a pleasure to work on. So I'm quite literally out here with the coyotes. I thought we'd uh, try it because I've never driven this thing with these Chinese knockoffs of the of the Proline, I forget what the tread pattern's called. Those there with the uh, with the cheap bead locks. But more importantly, how does the suspension work on it? Let's take this little bad boy for a, for a little bit of a rip. How about that? The tires sure seem to be grippy, even though they're not the not the real mill deal. One thing that's nice about having this thing set up like this is, um, as you can see, without them 2.2s, it actually fits that 2x12. Oh man, I was going to come out here and break this area because these i know these tires grab that dirt like or the hay pieces out here like crazy it's just we leave it out here because uh, when it's cold the dogs will come out here and lay around but i can put it in the barn but that look cool look like it's about to tip over there didn't it oh this thing doesn't doesn't do this board when it's in the this chassis mode does it I think it bottoms out. Yep. I guess that's one major bonus to having the the 2.2s on there. Look how much having that spacer out plus having the thing set up so it's not basically riding topped out all the time. Yeah, buddy. You know, I should get some of those, um, you know, the belly and the, pardon me, repositioning my hand here, the um, guards for the diffs and stuff. But those things, it actually lowers the truck and they hit everything. I don't think these things need all that fancy stuff. It looks, probably looks cool. Although... It does keep them from scratching up. The tires flex pretty good, huh? Look at that. No fender rub with 1.9s on there. I think these are like four and a half, four and three quarters outside diameter. The rims are 1.9. Where the uh, the 2.2s, the stock ones, they're uh, five and a half inches on the outside. I think that's what it is. Let's see how you. Are you gonna walk right over? That's one advantage of the bigger tires, though. You get that extra ground clearance. I think Traxxas says with those tires and the high lift kit, you gain an inch of ground clearance. That old Chevy K10. That looks just downright proper on this thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I wouldn't even point the camera at it. Let's see, man, she just went right over that thing. Man, that servo is so nice. If nothing else, I mean, you get the power, which is, which is, whoa, which is phenomenal. But you, um, also you lose that, 
um, that dead gum brush motor sound, that non-stop squeaking. These Corla servos, they're just silent. That thing just does not. It's funny how having all the diff locks can have that much of a difference. I have kind of a tricky time maneuvering out here. I've added too much stuff and it's hard for me to walk around. I keep tripping over stuff that's on the ground. Those hobby wing motors. Just that steady throttle torque that they have. You just hold the throttle and it'll go wherever until it either can't do it or it just physically flops over. But the motor is not gonna stop. Little we'll midnight run with the K10. What you think of that? That suspension just looks right proper. It doesn't seem so topped out, you know. If I keep the camera pointing in the right direction. I'm trying to watch where I'm driving. There we are. I'll just let us. And it's crazy how slow this thing will crawl. <laughs> you hear things creaking, that's kinda cool. Yeah, you just see the suspension moving non-stop. It's just absolutely doing what it's supposed to do. Cool stuff, huh? So anyway, that'll be it with my little goofing around. I'm impressed. I'll probably take a couple laps out here and goof around a little bit off camera. But yeah, I'm super happy with how that suspension worked out on that thing. Really nice. Heck yeah. Well, hello there, YouTube. Man, as you can tell it's gonna be nice tomorrow. It says it's 38 degrees out here. It feels a whole lot colder yeah, than that for does. some reason. Man, we got out of that car. It's all nice. Whoa, we're paying no attention to the temperature. Get here and jump out the car like, whoa. Yeah, if it's cold, it's like, can I crawl back in the car? Yeah, that's crazy. But, yeah, it's a good day at work. Nice mm -hmm. smooth thing with the BMW, and I had to go out there and play with the, the old K10. Amazing what a little tweaking of the suspension. So the car bounce, bounce, bouncing around the suspension. It's just absorbing and doing its thing. That's very I like good. them when they're like that. Mm -hmm. I would like to find, if I could, a little bit softer springs. I don't know where I'd look for that. Then, you know, do you go too soft? And I don't know. We'll play with it how it is. Seems just for messing around for a little bit, it seems really nice. So, a marked improvement. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're going to make the goodbye short and sweet tonight. Bail out. All righty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. And you guys have a wonderful Thursday or Friday. Heck yeah. All right. We'll see Till you tomorrow. in the morning. All right. We'll see you then. <laughs> Thanks for watching now. Bye-bye.